Hey everyone, welcome back to another Digital Making at Home bonus features video. Uh, this is the other bonus features video for the flower generator. So this is a project that me and my sidekick Zach did earlier. If you haven't seen that video, swing across to rpf.io slash home, have a look at the flower generator main video, finish that project up to the final point, and then come across to this one because this video adds to that one. If you haven't done that, you might get a little confused about what's going on. Um, so Without any further ado, let's kick on. I'll just swing across to my scratch screen there. Okay, so you can see the original scratch project that Zach and I did here uh, with the little bit that I've added to make like interesting dual color flowers as well, which is in the bonus features video one. If you haven't seen that one, you don't need to have seen that one to do this one, uh, but have a go at that one later if you haven't already seen it and makes it a little bit different. So let's have a look and see what this thing does just to remind you. So if we push F, we should get, right, I get a whole screen full of random flowers, which is really nice. If I push A, I get a whole screen full of dual color flowers. So one that's got an outside ring and an inside ring with the same petal shape, but two different colors. And so this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a different bit of functionality that will make the backdrop change color. And then it will also make a whole bunch of flowers appear in geometric places, right? So repeated sort of symmetrical places and you can make some nice patterns that way. So in order to do that, Let's scroll down the bottom. I'll leave that up here so we can see the custom block that we've got going. Uh, and then this one here, we're going to start from when a key is pressed. So this time I'm going to use P for pattern. So when the P key for pattern is pressed, I want it to do the same thing all the time. Okay, so we're going to have our erase all block first of all, because whatever we had up previously, we want to get rid of. We want to have the erase all show up. We want then to have it go to a certain specific place on our screen. So we're going to have our sprite go to minus 150, right, so to the left hand side of our screen, and then we want it to go above the median line, so let's say 100, okay, so my sprite, when I click P, it will clear everything, and that's where my sprite goes to, okay, you can see it appearing here, uh, I can set the size to be something a little different, all right, just so you can see where it is, when I push P, it goes to the same place, I can grab it, I can move it, I push P, and it goes back there, so that's where it's going to draw my flower, um, once I've got that going, I want it to do a bunch of stuff. So basically I want it to repeat and draw a bunch of flowers for me. So I'm going to go to control. I'm going to say repeat. Let's just do it. Uh, let's do it once for now, All right? So we'll have two flowers draw. And then what we're gonna do that is we're gonna come here and we're gonna grab out the draw flower block. So in my blocks, we've got draw flower with three parameters in it. So I'm gonna grab one of them and I'll grab one of them. So I'd like to have in my, we see here that I've got my parameters for color, size, and petals. So I'm going to draw a flower here and I like to have random operators for my colors. So I can do that from one to 199 and another one from one to 199, which is the max you can do that sort of thing on a color art scheme from zero, from one to 199, anything bigger and it won't like it, it won't do anything for you. And then for the number of, for the size we want it, we can set this one to be 100, right? So it'll be its normal size. And this one, let's make it slightly smaller. Let's make it uh, 33. Why not? So one third is big. So we'll have a big one and one that's one third the size. And then for petals, we can just tell it that we want to set our petals to be a specific number. So up here, we're picking randoms. Uh, but what we would want is we want to make sure that that number is always the same, no matter what it is. Okay, so we don't want to have one that's got nine petals on the outside, and three petals on the inside. Or do we? Maybe we do. I don't know, it's up to you. But for now, I'm just going to go, uh, let's say seven and seven, because that's a really cool number. So I'm going to go uh, P and it will draw me two flowers. Whoop, it doesn't like that because I put a P in there. It's not what I want. Okay, P. Okay, so I get the flower there and it's got seven and seven. Let's go to, let's make it go next costume, all right? So we're going to use the petal costume. All right, cool. So now we're starting to get it. So what I've got here is I'm going to do this and then I want it to motion, and I want it to change X, all right? So I want it to go across a little bit. I want it to change X in here by 100. And we should see it draw one flower and another flower, then move and draw one flower and another flower smaller again. So let's have a look and see if that works. Push P for pattern. There it is. So 100 is not quite big enough. Let's go to something a little bigger. Cool, all right? And so we've got this here, we've got our change by 200. So they're actually quite big. So let's make my a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller again. And then when I push P, there we go. Now they're not touching. Cool. Does we understand how that works? So what I've got here is it draws me two flowers, one big one, one small one, different colors. Then it moves 100 across in the X, draws one big one, one small one, two different colors again. Let's see if we can get to do that again. Cool. And they're a little bit closer together. Let's make them a little bit further apart. Okay. Cool. 
right? And so now I can grab another repeat and I can tell it to repeat that. Actually, let's get it to do that three times. Cool. I'm getting my three. And then when it gets to the bottom of this, I can have it change my Y or I can have it go to X minus 150. And then I want it to be the Y value minus whatever it currently is now. So let's hit an operator in there. And I want it to be my Y value minus the amount I want it to drop down by. So we've got it moving left by 120. Let's have it drop down by 120. And then to make it do that, I simply go to motion and I grab my current Y position. So that block says go to X minus 150 and then whatever your Y position is now, take 120 off of that then do it again, then do it again. So we're gonna have that repeat now. So we're gonna grab a control and tell it I want it to do that whole lot three times. So the number I put in here is how many rows I'm going to get. Okay, so currently I've got one row of three. Let's see if I can get three rows of three out of it. So I push P for pattern. There we go, three rows of three, three rows of three, three rows of three. And then to get rid of my sprite, which is still there as its own little single petal, I'm gonna tell it to hide. There we go, and it's gone. Okay, pretty cool. So the next thing we can do with it is we can ask it, I want you to switch the backdrop to a certain color. Okay, or we can go to our backdrop and we can have it broadcast a thing. So we could say broadcast something, change background to something. Or we can even go to our backdrops now and we can set a bunch of different colors, right? So we can go to backdrops and we can pick a specific color that we like for our backdrop. Let's go for sort of like a nice orange color. Uh, and then I want, what I want is the paint bucket. And then I just want to paint it all, or we can draw a square. So let's draw a square with no outline. Cool. And then I'm going to take that square and I'm going to draw a massive square across my whole backdrop. And then my backdrop is orange. Okay. And then I can duplicate that and I can change that to be a different color. Grab my square, change my fill to be a different color. All right. Now it's purple. And I'm going to dupe it again and I can change that to be a different color. Select my square, change the color to be blue. And then dupe it again, and I'll change, select my square, make sure I change the color to yellow. Cool. So now when we go to code, we go back to our sprite here, and we simply go to next backdrop. Okay. Or we could even go to, let's take that, let's pop this up here. Let's get rid of next backdrop. I've got a better idea. Let's go switch backdrop to, and how many backdrops do we have? We have one, two, three, four backdrops. So we go back here, uh, and so what we've got, we know we've got four backdrops, backdrop one, two, three, and four. We can grab a random operator, one, two, four, and so it's gonna choose a random backdrop for us every time we do it. So let's push P, random, 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 awesome. So I think I might change my X by a little more. Let's go for 150. I think I might try and spread them out a little more. There we go, now you're talking. Right, and so we've got all our flowers, they're showing up very Andy Warhol-esque, right? And you've got all these different colors showing up, picking random backdrops, random flower colors, all those sorts of things. We can also ask it to change our looks here. Maybe we want to switch to our next costume on our sprite. All right, so we can do that. And then we can go P again, and we get three different kinds of flowers. All right, we could also, let's go like this and get rid of next costume. We can go switch costume two. And we can choose a random one, knowing that our sprite here has got four costumes. We can choose a random costume between one and four. And then when I push P, right, chooses random ones for me. Really cool. I could even take that and throw it in here if I wanted. And I'd choose a random costume for my different flowers. Every time I drew a new flower, I'd get a random costume. Pretty cool, right? So we're starting to make some really nice artwork here. This is a nice steady pattern that we can do with our artwork. Depends on how you want to do it. I think I like to have my random costume out here, to be honest. I like the rows of flowers. Pretty cool, right? Um, and that's basically it, everybody. That's how we can make those sorts of different patterns, kind of like a wallpaper. If I wanted to save it again, just to remind you, you right click here, choose Save Image As, and it just downloads it right there. So when I open it up, pops up on my screen, I'll drag it across to this screen for you so you can see it, and there it is, I've got it saved. I can take that image, I can share it to people, I can send it to grandma, I can make it into like a backdrop for my desktop, I can do all sorts of cool things with it. And that's our patterns. 
So we hope you enjoyed that, guys. Keep tuning in to us at rpf.io slash home where we make cool stuff together. And uh, we'd love to see your work. Again, share your work with us. Share it to us through rpf.io slash home. Tweet it to us. Send it to us on Facebook, anything like that. And keep watching the live streams every week, everybody. We run them at Wednesdays, 2 p.m. British Standard Time. Um, you can come in. You can watch those. You can see us do live coding with young people. We get the audience to participate, ask us questions, throw us solutions. All sorts of really cool stuff happens like that. So just remember, everybody, because we're not all in the same place, doesn't mean we can't keep getting together to make awesome stuff. And I'll see you next week. Catch you later. Bye.